Hey, welcome to NetGameDev.com, your largest collection of Unity networking samples, tutorials, and tools. Now, I have this fun little demo here where we have a client and a server, and the client can walk up to one of these objects, go ahead and pick them up, uh, bring them to any position he'd like, and just drop them there. This is done using RPCs, and this gives us a nice little chance to figure out exactly how RPCs work and how we can create them. Let's take a look. So all of that functionality is being conducted in just one class, this pickable object class. Now, to have an RPC inside a class, you need to make sure that the class is a network behavior. Uh, ordinary mono behaviors cannot have RPCs. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at how you would create a server RPC, such as the one we have here. Now, this code here is not of much importance to us initially, so I'll go ahead and remove it for now. And the important thing about RPCs is, is, is having this attribute at the top here that says server RPC. Then the name of the RPC as well needs to end in server RPC like this one here. And then inside this parameter section, you can have pretty much any parameter that you would like. In here, I've just put the U long for the client ID. Now, if we bring back this functionality here, you can see the typical functionality that's normally called in server RPCs. So here, what I'm doing is I'm changing the ownership of this object. And then here, I'm just allowing us to be able to commit to the transform of this object, which is what allows us to move objects around. Keep in mind here, at the top where I have the server RPC attribute, I am specifying that there is no requirement for the one calling this server RPC to have ownership of the object, because by default, to call a server RPC on an object, you do need to have ownership as a client over that object. And then to call the server RPC is as simple as just calling it and passing in the different parameters that the server RPC requires. As for parameters, you can pass in any any parameter that's normally accepted as a network variable parameter and you can also create new parameter types using a similar method to the one we used in our network variables video i'll leave that linked at the top and that's pretty much it if you call this functionality on any client it will not be called in the client it will simply be sent over to the server and then the server can call it now let's take a look at the client rpc so creating a client rpc follows a very similar pattern we need the client rpc attribute at the top here and then we can name our function but it has to end with the client rpc text like here again we can pass in any network parameters that are usually accepted as network variables and they'll be able to go through one thing about client rpcs though as you can imagine a network usually has one server or host and multiple clients so there's a little bit of confusion about when you call a client rpc where does it get called now client rpcs are called across all clients unless you specify that they should be called on a singular client to do that your client rpc has to have a parameter of client rpc params and you can call this whatever you'd like and then right here where you can see we're actually calling this you go ahead and specify a new object of client rpc params inside here and then you specify a send object which is a new client rpc send parameters object and then the target client ids of that object should be an array of all clients that you want to receive this so you can just pass in their uh, client id here and they'll all be sent this client rpc this is a very useful way to send rpcs to very specific clients uh, which is a very common thing uh, while sending client RPC. Now you can see here, I'm creating a new client RPC parameters object every single time I'm sending the RPC, but a cooler way to do it would just be to have this cached up in some local variable so that you do not need to allocate new memory for the garbage collector to clean up every single time you're sending an RPC. And that, boys, is pretty much it with RPCs. It's very simple functionality that can be used to achieve some pretty complicated stuff in netcode and uh, that's why it's so important to be very very familiar with it. Now if you like this video be sure to scroll down to the description and click the very first link in there to go ahead and join my disc. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe as well while you're at it and I will catch you in the next video. Peace out.